Good evening, everybody, and welcome to BCS Edinburgh Branch webinar, Top 10 Tips for Making Remote Work remote work Actually Work Right Now. My name is Mike Hurst from BCS Edinburgh Branch, and I'll be handling the technical side of this meeting. Before we start, a quick note on GoToWebinar for people who are not familiar with it. Depending on whether you are running the desktop app or in browser, you'll see something like the panel on the left or the browser page on the right. By default, you are muted. You can click the mic icon labeled A above to unmute yourself, although we need to allow that first. The hand icon labeled B above will notify us that you are requiring attention. You can ask questions by typing into the questions panel. If you are having technical issues during the session, please use the questions panel and I'll try to help. To allow smooth running of the session, we'll take questions at the end of the presentation, either typed questions via the questions panel or raise your hand and we'll unmute you to ask your question. We are recording this talk and it will be available on our BCS branch website and the BCS YouTube channel. I'll now switch, switch presenters to Lauren and while I'm doing that, I'll hand over to Seb Rose to introduce our speaker for this evening. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so before introducing Lauren, um, I would like to uh, inform any of you that are uh, paying attention that next time, next week at the same time, uh, there'll be an extra uh, BCS Edinburgh session uh, presented by Claire Sudbury, who will be talking about broken promises, how to keep your word and your sanity too. Uh, and I, uh, if you enjoyed this talk by Lauren, then I think you will also enjoy the talk by Claire. So um, I hope to see you there as well. So without further ado then, let me introduce Lauren. So uh, Lauren was in fact introduced uh, to me by a very close friend, Sally Ann Freudenberg, who um, gave her a, a real proper bigging up. And then uh, I went and had a look uh, at her Twitter profile and uh, pinned to the top of that is an excellent presentation, a little video where she, um, well, I thought she was dancing as she was putting signs up onto the whiteboard, but Lauren, uh, Lauren corrected me and said that that was just movement. So she's obviously a, a very mobile yeah, <laughs> sort of dancing. Anyway, so um, most of us over the past uh, the past year and a bit will have been thrown into home working and remote working, even if we weren't expecting to be thrown into it. So uh, I wonder how that went for all of you that are watching. I know that the, for me, there were some ups and the downs, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing Lauren's top 10 tips, uh, which she's obviously been refining over the past year as well. So without further ado, Lauren, it's over to you. Thank you. Thank you. So, hey, everybody, would you like to be a happier remote employee or perhaps a more successful remote employee? Well, if you answered yes to either of those questions, you are in the right place. By the time this session is over, my goal is for you to be ready to implement one tip this coming week. Now, before I launch into those top 10 tips, I want to begin with my story of how I began working remotely. Now, to do that, we're going to travel back in time to 2008. Now, it was a simpler time. Tina Fey was amusing us Americans with her impression of Sarah Palin. We all thought Rick rolling someone was hilarious. And Beyonce was encouraging men to put a ring on it. Well, that summer, my boyfriend at the time did just that. He proposed and I gleefully said yes. And we returned to grad school that fall. Now I was studying computer science and he was studying nuclear engineering. And we ran into a bit of a problem. I was starting to apply to full-time jobs and get offers while the recruiting cycle for his industry didn't start until the following spring. And the challenge was that there aren't many open nuclear engineering jobs at any given time. And those jobs are in very specific locations. Like you have to work at the power plant and there aren't that many of them. So ultimately we knew we wanted to live in the same location. Um, we weren't sure where that was gonna be. So I ended up with three job offers that fall in Raleigh, North Carolina, but I was afraid to commit to them because I didn't know where my fiance would get a job. So eventually I decided just to put my cards on the table. So I called up each of the hiring managers and I said, look, I mean, I can commit to working for you for a year in the office, but I really don't know after that. 
I'm not sure if I'll still be living in Raleigh after a year. Will you let me work from home after a year? Now, the first manager was like, nope, that's not going to happen. One manager was kind of noncommittal. He was like, well, maybe it depends on your performance and we'll have to see. And then one manager was like, yeah, that's no problem at all. So it was a pretty easy decision for me. I didn't care about the tech or anything else. I just wanted to be able to have the option of working remotely. So I accepted the job at IBM with the manager who would let me work remotely. My fiance received a job offer from a company in Maryland. So we were glad I had that option to work remotely. We both graduated and began our full-time jobs with me in North Carolina and him several hours away up in Maryland. Now, my job was in Cubeland. And let me tell you, Cubeland can be the worst. I didn't have any windows. I had to be quiet. And if I glared, if I, if I yelled down the hallway to my friends, you know, people would glare at me. So I tried to liven up my cube by wallpapering it with wrapping paper, but it still felt pretty drab. After a year in Cubeland, I was happy to get married and move to Maryland and get out of Cubeland. I was thrilled to begin working remotely. But here's the thing, and maybe you've experienced this over the past year when you've been working remotely. Working remotely can also be the worst. This was a huge adjustment for me. I went from seeing people in the office daily to seeing no one except for my husband on a regular basis. I went from having lots of local friends to having one set of couple friends to hang out with. I went from living in a large city with lots of things to do to living in a small town that didn't even have a shopping mall. I went from living by myself in this nice uh, tidy apartment to living with a man who did not share my standards of tidiness and I saw the mess all day long since I rarely left the house. I went from that excitement and busyness of planning a wedding to having nothing major going on in my life. My life changed in a big way and I was not exactly happy about it. Maybe you can relate to this. More frequently than I would have liked, my work days dragged on throughout the evening, which made it difficult for me to unplug from work and relax. I was one of the few remote people on my team and I felt very isolated. I knew they were having conversations without me. And I began gaining weight month by month, pound by pound. All of these things combined left me unhappy and unpassionate about my work. In fact, I used to daydream about quitting. Over time though, my career began to gain momentum and working remotely became the best. I was able to switch teams and roles to gain new skills and work on new projects. I figured out how to create a regular schedule that allowed me to exercise and relax in the evenings. And I began building connections with my teammates as well as other local people in my area. So after nearly eight years at IBM, I went on to be a developer advocate at Sugar CRM and I worked remotely there. Currently, I work as a developer advocate for MongoDB where I continue to work remotely. I've been remote since 2010, and I really enjoy what I do. In fact, on the rare occasions I go into the office to work for a couple of days, I struggle. First, I realize how much I talk out loud to myself, which is a little embarrassing. But second, I get distracted by the chatter, right? I find myself chatting with coworkers and distracted by other people who are chatting. Like, I wanna know what they're talking about. I much prefer to sit in the quiet of my home office where I can look out my window and listen to music. Once I figured out how to work remotely, I loved it. And I don't see myself ever going back into an office. Now, many of us have been in lockdown for over a year and that has meant a year of remote work. So how is working remotely going for you? Now, uh, I think we have a chat and I would love to hear from you. Give me like a great, like things are, things are going good. I'm loving the extra commute time with my family. Or, I'm sorry, I'm loving having no commute time so I can spend extra time with my family. Or maybe give me a like, this is not working. This is bad. Um, you know, you're feeling isolated or you can't work because there's people running around. Or maybe you're somewhere in the middle. You're having good days and you're having bad. 
So I would love to tell me, give me like good, bad, middle. I'm gonna pause for just a second. All right, I can't see anything. So I don't know if you guys are just being shy or I don't know how to work um, GoToWebinar, but hopefully you're there with me. So, so whatever the case, let's talk about how to make the experience better for you. So today I'm gonna to share my top 10 tips for making remote work actually work. Number 10, acknowledge this is not normal. Life isn't normal right now. If you're struggling to work remotely, it's important to acknowledge these are not normal remote work conditions. Julia, who's a technical program manager at Google, tweeted this at the beginning of May. She said, I've been working remotely for two and a half years. The past two and a half months have left me more exhausted than ever before. This is your reminder that you're not working remotely. You're working remotely during a global health crisis. Now, I could not agree more. I've been working remotely for 10 years and working remotely during quarantine has been a huge struggle for me. For the first two months, I had a four-year-old who was running around making noise and interrupting me. Now, previously, before the pandemic, when I would tell people that I would work from home, they would say things like, oh, that must be so nice. You get to spend time with your kid while you're working. And I would say, oh, no, 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 she goes to daycare. There is no way I could be an effective employee and a good parent at the same time. And yet, many of us have been forced to do just that during quarantine, and it's been rough. Perhaps you have noisy kids or roommates or pets. Perhaps you're stressed because of financial concerns, or you're worried about the health of your friends and family, or you miss being around other people, or you're upset due to recent tragedies and racial injustice, or you're frustrated with politics. Whatever the case, life is not normal right now. So try to cut yourself some slack. Now, I know that's easier said than done, but seriously, try to cut yourself some slack and acknowledge that if you're currently struggling with remote work, you may do better once we return to more normal conditions, like whatever that looks like. All right, number nine, do something else. If you're gonna be on a call where you know you're gonna to struggle to pay attention and you're gonna be tempted to reply to email or check your social media or make snarky comments with your colleagues on Slack, take your hands away from your keyboard, away from your phone, and just do some other mindless task. For example, you could do the dishes or do some coloring or do some house cleaning or exercise or maybe even paint your nails. Now, studies show that doodling helps people retain information. I have found the same to be true for really any mindless task. If I sit here in front of my computer that temptation to multitask is too great. I'm likely to do something else that will require mental energy and prevent me from fully listening. So for those boring all hands calls or dry talks where you're gonna struggle to pay attention, turn off that webcam and just do something else. All right, number eight, eat intentionally. Now I have a problem of bringing a huge Costco sized box of Cheez-Its into my office and then eating way too many of them. I don't know if the UK has Cheez-Its, but they are the most delicious cheesy snackers, cheesy cracker snacks ever, and I can just eat the whole box. Uh, I, I don't know what your, your snack of choice is, but you know, whenever my toddler snacks or my husband snacks, I want a snack. The quarantine has not been kind to my waistline. So I've been trying to make an effort recently to eat intentionally. If I want a snack, I'm gonna pour a reasonably sized portion into a bowl and I'm trying to keep my snacks relatively healthy. Now I've heard from some of my colleagues, they actually have the opposite problem. They'll sit at their desks and not realize they have missed lunch until 2 p.m. I don't understand how this is possible, but apparently this is a real issue for some people. So if that's you, set an alarm on your phone or block time on your calendar to make sure you eat lunch. Make sure you're taking care of yourself 
and eating intentionally. All right, number seven, actively prevent burnout. When you work from home, it's so easy to work long hours and never feel disconnected from your work. A study in March of last year showed that US employees are working an average of three hours more during the pandemic. Three hours per day, three hours more per day. When you work remotely, you don't have that physical trigger of walking into an office to know you should begin working, and then that physical trigger of leaving the office to know you should stop working. It's so easy for the lines to blur, especially when we have access to Slack or Teams or email on our phones. But here's the thing. Your employer has invested a lot of time and money to make you a productive employee. They don't want you to burn out and quit. Right? If you leave, they have to start over and train someone completely new to be productive. And if you leave, you might take with you that team knowledge that's not written down anywhere. So actively prevent burnout. Now your manager probably is not gonna do this for you. So you have to be very proactive. If your manager asks you to do something that will force you to work overtime, be upfront and ask them which tasks they would like you to drop. Also, Pick what time you typically want to start working and what time you typically want to stop working and then stick to it. Now, exceptions come up and that's okay, but in general, try to stick to a consistent start and stop time. When your workday is over, turn off your computer. And if you have Slack or Teams or email on your phone, turn off those notifications. Completely disconnect whenever possible so that you can return to work the next day refreshed and ready to do your best. All right, number six, be productive. Yep, it's important to actually do your job. Now, Slack conducted a study during the pandemic and found that how long you've been working remotely in terms of experience makes an impact on how productive you are. In fact, they found that those who were new to remote work were twice as likely to say they are less productive at home. The study also showed that a majority of experienced remote workers say they are more productive at home. So over time, as you work remotely, you gather tools to help you be more productive. So let's talk about some of the tools that you can use to help you be productive. First up, set daily goals. I begin every day by looking at my task list and then picking out the top one or two things that I wanna get done that day and then I do everything I can to get those done. This helps me focus on what's most important and not just what's most urgent or what's easiest. Now, one of the qu most common questions I get is what tool I use to manage my task list. I use Jira as it's what my team uses and I put everything in there so I have one consolidated list. So obviously code I need to write goes in there, but if I need to prep for a conference session or I need to uh, do some learning, all that stuff goes on that same consolidated task list so I can look in one place. I also really like using Asana and it's what I use at home with my husband to manage our family's to-do list. I've also heard really great things about Trello. So use whatever to-do list works for you. So once I decide what I need to work on, right, what's my most important one or two things, I personally have a tendency to get lost in my work. I could sit at my computer for hours without taking a break, except for maybe a quick trip to the kitchen to get a snack, which then I would eat at my desk. This is not good. So what I've done is set up reminders to move on my Fitbit. So every hour my Fitbit will buzz if I've not moved enough. This is great as it helps me stretch and clear my head. Studies show that mental breaks will help you be more productive, so take them. Now on the flip side, some people struggle to get work done if they don't have the accountability of someone walking by to see if they're actually working. So if you're one of those people, I recommend trying out the Pomodoro technique. It's named after the tomato shaped kitchen timers like you see in this picture. So the idea is to work in short blocks of time on a specific task, about 25 minutes, and then take a break. The great thing here is that it encourages you to avoid distractions like social media or TV or Slack messages so you can create focused work time to get stuff done. So if you wanna Google the technique, it's called the Pomodoro technique. 
So let's sum this tip up. We wanna set goals, take mental breaks, and be productive. All right, we have made it halfway through our list. Number five, embrace the kids. Now this is not advice I give typically to remote workers, but these are not normal times. So I don't know if you remember this BBC interview from a couple years ago. So this guy is giving an interview on a very serious topic and one of his kids like rolls in, she's super pleased with herself and the dad is just mortified and he tries to shove the kid away. And then kid number two literally rolls in and dad can't believe this is happening. Now here comes mom, she's here to save the day. That's what moms do. And eventually she's gonna pull the kids out and uh, she will manage to eventually shut the door. Now, to be honest with you, I probably would have been mortified as well. I'm a huge advocate for having childcare if you're working from home. It's really hard to be an effective parent and an effective employee at the same time. The thing is, kids are home right now and there's very little we can do about it. I was so impressed with the way Jimmy Fallon embraced his kids while filming The Tonight Show at the beginning of the pandemic. He knew his kids were gonna be around, so he rolled with it. My husband and I have done our best to co-parent while working remotely, but it's been tough. I've been so appreciative of my manager and teammates who talk with my daughter and make her feel special when they see her on the call. My kid is so much happier when she feels acknowledged. I found that if I let her come in, say hi to everybody, give them a big wave, she's much more likely to play and leave and go to another room. So if you're working with people who have kids at home, please be kind to the kids. A few kind words will make everyone feel better. The parents are struggling. Also, while it may seem like parents are the least productive people on your team right now, a Valor study showed otherwise. They surveyed people during the pandemic and found that those who were working from home with children saw a 2% productivity decrease. They found that those who were working alone without other adults or children in the home saw a 3% productivity decrease. Now this really surprised me. My hypothesis would have been that parents would be the least productive group. So when you're checking in on your coworkers who are parents to make sure they're doing okay, also check in on your coworkers who are isolating completely by themselves because they might be struggling even more. All right, number four, care for yourself. Now this is one that is definitely easier said than done, especially if you're caring for others right now, but do what you can to care for yourself. Try to exercise a bit every day, try to eat something healthy and try to do something fun. Now I'm very introverted, so you might be thinking I'd be doing fine during quarantine, but I actually have way less time to myself right now that everyone is home with me all the time. They won't leave. So I found that taking slow walks by myself in the evening can really help. And sometimes I put on these big noise canceling headphones outside just so I can be really alone with my thoughts. My husband and I decided a few months ago that we should each take a night off from parenting. So sometimes I'll meet up with a friend for you know, dinner at a local park, we'll stay six feet apart, bring our takeout, but it's what I need. And sometimes he'll go out, go golfing by himself, but we each need some time away from the daily grind of parenting. So if you're feeling that way, see if you can lean on your support system. Maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's just someone you can hire, but figure out how to get time to yourself. Now my guess, is that the extroverts out there are also struggling. If that's you, create virtual coffee breaks, happy hours, game nights. I played so much among us during the pandemic. You know, do whatever is fun to you with your colleagues, your friends, or your families. You know what you need, so make time for it. If you find that you're struggling with your mental health, I encourage you to talk with a therapist. Despite the fact that I've been working remotely for 10 years, the pandemic has hit me really hard. At the end of last year, I began meeting with a therapist for the first time in my life, and I'm really glad I did. She helped me talk through some situations and feel like I'm regaining control of pieces of my life in this world where I have very little control. So if you're struggling, know that you're not the only one. Reach out if you need help. Care for yourself. 
All right, moving on. Number three, take a lunch break. Now you might be thinking, uh, wait, Lauren already had a tip about eating intentionally. Why are we talking about food again? Yes, I do like to eat food during the day. But this tip is less about food and more about taking a break in the middle of your day, every day, away from your computer. Now, as a working mom, my lunch break used to be one of my favorite parts of my day. It was my guilt-free time to sit quietly and enjoy watching whatever TV show I want that no one else in my family wants to watch. Now, I have a weakness for bad TV, and I enjoy watching it without interruption. Maybe you're not a TV person. Uh, maybe you prefer to read a book or a magazine. Maybe you want to listen to a podcast, or maybe you want to go for a walk or get some exercise. Whatever the case, take 30 minutes in the middle of your day, step away from your computer, and go do something else. I found that I'm starting to lose focus or I'm stuck on a problem. I can take my lunch break and then I'll return refreshed. And the answer on how to at least take the next step forward will usually come to me. So every day, take a lunch break. All right, I have saved my most important two tips for last. So number two, ask for what you want. I attended the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing a few years ago, back when we could attend conferences in person, and a moderator asked a keynote panel, if you could change one thing, what would it be? Tella Whitney's response was so simple, but it has stuck with me all these years later. She said, if I could change anything, it would be that each and every one of you would ask for what she wants. Now, back before the pandemic, when I would share this with people, I would encourage them to ask for a promotion or a raise or a growth opportunity. And I stand by that advice. But I want to really encourage you to think about what you want right now from your company, your spouse, your roommates, your kids, and then ask them for it. I've been reading a lot of articles about how to successfully work remotely with kids during quarantine. And some of the articles suggest that you simply explain to your kids that you need focused work time. And then supposedly the kids will allow you to work for an hour or two completely uninterrupted. That sounds amazing, but I can assure you that has not worked for my four-year-old. So think about what your ask is, what's within that reasonable scope of possibilities, and then ask for it. In my case, back at the beginning of the pandemic, I told my manager I was struggling to work with my toddler at home, and I asked to take advantage of parental care leave that the company was offering. My management team was super supportive. So the company was offering us to take a couple of weeks off if we had dependents in order to care for them while we kind of figured out what we were gonna do uh, you know, to get through the rest of the pandemic. And so my manager came back to me and said, Lauren, you can take those off if you want, or would you rather work part-time and stretch those weeks out for longer? And I was like, yes, that is a much better option for me. So I ended up being able to take, I think it was six or eight weeks part-time. And this was a great option for both my family. So I was able to spend time with my daughter and I was able to stay plugged into work and feel like I was still getting that adult time that I wanted. So perhaps you wanna ask your manager if you can shift your schedule around and work different hours than you typically do. Perhaps you want to ask your manager if you can take time off as part of FMLA because working with kids just isn't working. Perhaps you want to ask your boss for a new desk or an external monitor. Perhaps you want to ask someone if they can watch your kids so you can have a night off. Perhaps you want to ask your roommates if they can stop playing loud music at 10 p.m. so you can maintain a regular sleep schedule. It might seem scary or feel uncomfortable, but the people in your life probably don't know what you need or what you want. So ask for what you want. And now I'm gonna pause for just a moment here and ask you to write down something that you can ask for in the next week. If you feel comfortable, I encourage you to share it in the um, questions panel, which I know Seth is not gonna like because it's not really a question, but that way you can share it with the other people and they can see um, what your asks are. So take a moment, think about something you can ask for, write down on a piece of paper, write down on your computer, or share it in the questions. I'd love to hear what, what you're gonna ask for this week. Lauren, sorry to butt in there. If you if folks could share it in the chat panel, then in fact, Lauren can interact with it directly. Love that, thank you. Uh, 
I have to say I'm not seeing anything come in at the moment, Lauren. All right, we will keep moving then. Ah, Mike is reminding me that, okay, no, that's my bad. Mike's reminding me that the audience doesn't get access to chat. I'm sorry, audience. So yes, if you would like to write it into the Q&A panel, I can read out what you write. That's testing from Gustavo. Yes, Gustavo, I see your test method message. We'll figure this out. Um, Jim says, I would ask for access to chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I am right there with you. I'd love a, a good chat going right now. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going, but uh, feel free to share and we can chat about them at the end. All right, my final tip for you today, be a great PR agent for yourself. Now, I'm shamelessly borrowing this tip from a keynote that Nora Denzel gave several years ago. She encouraged us all to be great PR agents for yourself, PR standing for public relations. Your colleagues and your managers probably don't know all of the amazing things you do, so tell them. If you solve a really hard problem, tell them about it. And don't just say, I solved X and it was like no big deal, right? Explain why it was hard or time consuming. When you're remote, people don't get to see what you're working on. So you have to really consciously advertise your work. If you have a daily scrum or a weekly status meeting, show up ready to tell your team what you've been working on. Be conscious of the words you're using to describe yourself. Really control your press release. Now I gave a conference talk a couple years ago and a vice president from my company asked how it went. I said, well, I got really nervous, so I started talking really fast, and then I started coughing, and I lost my train of thought. And he said, Lauren, I heard it went great. And I thought, oh my gosh, here I am wrecking this press release that someone already gave about me to a vice president. What am I doing? So if you do a good job, let people know about it. And there are different ways you can do this, and it really depends on your team's culture. So if somebody gives me a compliment on Twitter or email, I forward that right on to my management team. If someone gives me a compliment verbally, I, I'll say, hey, would you mind sending that to me in an email so I can forward it to my manager, right? And if someone else is saying it on my behalf, it's an easy way for me to brag without it seeming like I'm bragging. You can also create a culture of compliments on your team. So if you compliment your teammates and you make it normal to do so, they're likely to compliment your strengths as well. Just be sure those compliments are genuine and that's gonna be a win for everybody. So be a great PR agent for yourself. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 tips for making remote work actually work right now. So I'm gonna recap these tips one last time. As I go through these, I encourage you to pick one tip you can implement over the next week and share it in the questions if you feel comfortable but please write it down so you can remember to try it out this coming week. So here we go. Number 10, acknowledge this isn't normal. If you're struggling to work remotely right now, know that there are a lot of other factors at play. Remote work may not necessarily be the problem. Number nine, do something else. If you're gonna struggle to pay attention during a meeting, do a mindless task at the same time. Number eight, Eat intentionally. Portion control your snacks. Schedule lunch if you need to. Number seven, actively prevent burnout. Do what you can to work a consistent schedule. When you're done working, turn off your computer and your phone notifications. Number six, be productive. Set daily goals, take mental breaks, use the Pomodoro technique to stay focused. Number five, Embrace the kids. They're around right now, so let parents know that it's okay. Number four, care for yourself. Every day, try to exercise a little, eat something healthy, and do something fun. Talk with someone if you're struggling. Number three, take a lunch break. In the middle of your day, step away from your computer for 30 minutes to clear your head. Number two, ask for what you want. People probably don't know what you want or need unless you ask, so ask. 
And number one, be a great PR agent for yourself. Advertise your work and be conscious of the words that you're using when you do so. So what tip are you gonna try this week? I'd love for you to share if you're comfortable. And with that, I wish you well on your remote work journey. I hope you find both happiness and success. You've got this. All right, Seb, do we have any questions? So um, we do have, well, so to start with, we've got the nine people responded to your first question right at the beginning of the talk. Yay. And uh, you asked, um, uh, you asked uh, what, how people were doing with the remote working. We've got a, a love it, good, definitely middle, good and bad, uh, good, having more time for my family is great, so thumbs up for me, uh, working fine, yes, mostly, mixed, medium for me, as a BA, I miss the direct interaction, but love the life work mix, so. Wow, uh, I'm happy it's it's working so well for so many of you, that is awesome to hear, and for those that's kind of the middle, I hope, I hope you got some tips to pick up that'll that'll make it a little better this coming week. So your second question about what when you were talking about um, ask for what you want, uh, Jim said uh, he well, we said we uh, asked for access to chat. We also got one that uh, um, we had uh, Uchechi who said he would ask for a reasonable time to complete deliverables. Now I think that seems reasonable, doesn't it? That is super important. And I, I love that you're not saying like, we just need to ditch everything, but you're like, let's let's negotiate, let's work on it together. Let's let's find something, I love that. And when you were asking uh, at the end for which of the 10 people would go for, Alistair said that he was gonna go for the virtual coffee breaks. Um, and he thinks yeah. that both him and his team needs them at the moment. That's awesome. I hope that works out well for you guys. So, um, Lauren, thank you for that talk. Uh, folks, if you have specific questions about any of the 10 uh, top tips that Lauren has given us, or indeed, if you have any other questions um, about remote working, uh, then this, please type them into the Q&A uh, box and I will, um, I will relay them to Lauren. Um, and while we're waiting for all the questions that I'm sure will be coming, I've got a question if you don't mind, Lauren. Your first tip, Lauren, it. tip number 10, was um, this isn't normal. Uh, and yeah. I guess uh, my question is, what if it is the new normal? Do you think we're gonna end up working remotely much more regularly than we have been? I, I do, yeah. And we, we've already started to see that, you know, in Silicon Valley, we've seen big chunks tech companies like Facebook and Twitter start to shift to hiring remotely, which um, I think is excellent. I, I mean, I, I shared my story at the beginning of, you know, I was really only considering positions that would let me work remotely. And that's been consistent throughout my whole career. And, you know, when recruiters reach out, that's the first question I ask, can I work remotely? I can't move. Can I work remotely? And I think we're, we're finally starting to see a shift where people are comfortable hiring remote employees, which is great. Um, and, and I'm, I personally am very excited about that. I think that's, that's positive. And I, I do want to say, I, I don't think remote work is right for everyone, right? Uh, some people like to be in the office. They thrive off, off of that energy. So I'm not saying it's a one size fits all thing, but I think companies are, are starting to realize there are benefits and employees are capable of being productive and staying focused without a manager sitting there and watching them. So no, I, I don't think it's normal, but I think, you know, some of our remote, hopefully kids are going to go back to school, right? We've started seeing kids going back to school. So some of those distractions might start to go away and, and maybe it'll get easier to work remotely, you know, and maybe you won't be so worried about the pandemic. And, you know, like there's just a lot on everybody's minds right now. It's just, it's heavy. It's been a heavy year. It has that. Um, this question is a bit related, but um, Keith asks, what have you heard about companies' plans uh, with regarding returning to the office? Do you think it'll be a full office return, all of them staying remote, or blended approach? I'm hopeful we're going to see a, a blended approach. Um, I can speak, you know, to I work for MongoDB, and we had been my team. I'm, I'm a developer advocate. I have a, a very travel-heavy role, so my team has always been remote. 
but the engineering team has been very much a in-person culture. And throughout this, they've said, oh, engineers can work remotely. That's that's going to be fine. Um, so we're starting to see a blended approach. Um, I've also heard of companies who've just sold their offices completely. And so everybody's going to be remote now. So I'm, I'm excited to see that shift of giving people the flexibility that they need. So we'll see. Thank you. Uh, Gustavo asks, um, ha, uh, how challenging have managers found it to manage their teams remotely? Mm, that's a good question. So I am not a manager, um, but I know that that is definitely uh, a, an issue and it's a different management style. You have to trust that your employees are going to do the right thing and you have to be very intentional about communication and communicating priorities. Like people don't overhear things. So you have to say, okay, I'm going to get everybody together. Um, I don't have specific tips for managers. So I'm sure there are excellent articles out there, but I, uh, I'm not an expert manager. So that's that, by the way, folks, is another, uh, another top thing, which is know when to say, I don't know. There's nothing <laughs> shameful about that at all. Uh, okay, uh, Simon asks, the, the new normal could be a hybrid of working from home and office working. In terms of whiteboards and collaboration, has anyone nailed this yet? We have just about got everyone using remote tools, Teams and Miro are working, but the mix of office and home working might be a challenge. Smart screens, other tech, any thoughts? I love Miro, uh, so I'm glad you all have found that. I think it works great. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like. I know we've got a, I'll speak to my company again, at MongoDB, we've got a dedicated IT team who is focused just on this, on figuring out how we're going to make sure that uh, remote employees don't become second class citizens to people who are physically in the room. So it's a challenge. We'll see how it how it works. Um, you know, as a, uh, when I have been on the phone and there have been people in the room, it is a very frustrating experience trying to break in. Um, verbally can be very challenging. So what I like to ask is what, if I know there's gonna be a bunch of people in the room, I ask if there will be a moderator who is there in the room who will watch the chat and see if someone's raising their hand and say, hey, we, got, we need a remote comment and just break in because it's very hard to do. So there are things you can do to make it easier for people who are on the phone to feel like they're being heard and they're still equal to everybody who's there in the room. Yeah, I, I'm gonna second that one. I would suggest that uh, everyone in the same room is kind of easy. Everyone remote might not be easy, but at least you're equal. But when, you're, yes. when you've got a bit of each, it's really hard. Yes. Uh, and Jim asks, uh, do you feel like you have opportunities for water cooler type discussions with the team to help you spur ideas? What ideas do you have for how we could create more of them? Yes. So uh, if you have something like Slack, it's very helpful. Slack or Teams and just having a, a group chat open all the time is really nice. Um, but sometimes that doesn't create those informal discussions. Like you don't want to chat about the weather in front of 10 people. I don't know. I personally don't. It gets noisy. Um, so what I have done in the past, I've done a couple different things. What I do right now is I've, I have a book club with my team and we meet together once a week and we we uh, discuss one chapter of the book. So we keep it really light. It's not, well, we've read heavy books, but you don't have to do a lot of reading per week. And we say, you can show up even if you haven't read the book. It's fine. Just come so we can chat. And we'll start out talking about the book but a lot of times it devolves into more casual conversation and that's very intentional. Um, my team is very introverted. I think that's very normal for developers to feel a little introverted. And if you put us all on a virtual happy hour with drinks and just expect that we're gonna start talking in a Zoom room, we're not gonna do it. We have to have a little bit of a structure in order to get started talking. And so creating things that you people wanna show up for and saying, it's okay if we go off topic, that's totally fine. It is great. In the past, something else I've done is I've just said, hey guys, let's let's meet together for lunch once a month. And so we would all get online at the same time and eat our lunch. And I would usually suggest a topic um, just to kind of get the conversation going and then it, it could go from there. So creating those informal ways that people like 
some people might like that. You know, some people might be like, yeah, let's just have drinks online and it's fine. Um, and some people might not. Oh, the other thing we've done is we have played Jackbox games together, which are just silly little fun games. And then you can start talking on top of those as well. So create something everybody wants to do and say it's okay to go off topic. Great. Uh, Gustavo has a question, says, what other technologies uh, you believe can help improve productivity working remotely? Mm. Let me think. Um, well, so I, I hit on a little bit in the talk. So the, the Pomodoro technique works really well for some people where you say, I'm going to focus for 25 minutes uh, and then I'm going to do something else. And so there are, there are actual Pomodoro timers that you can find online that will help you with that. Something I've been doing recently, uh, I have found that people have started adding more meetings to my calendar and my day is getting chopped up. So I have started just blocking time on my calendar. I need these four hours to write and otherwise I'm not gonna get my job done. So I will just block that off. Um, and during that time, I will turn off my, we use Slack, I will turn off my Slack notifications as well so that I can just focus. So I think, giving, you know, creating a culture where it's okay to say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to be able to reply to you instantly. I'm going to be working and, and making that okay is important. So maybe, I guess maybe I, my advice is use slightly less technology so you can focus and, and really get your work done. That would probably work for your um, intentional lunch break as well, if you can block out mm -hmm. half hour or something every day. So Jim and Gustavo both say thank you. Uh, You're welcome. I'm, I'm going to put out a last call for folk to ask any questions that they're just bursting to get Lauren to answer. Um, and and while we're while I'm waiting to see if any pop up, uh, I want to ask Lauren about uh, chairs and standing desks. Do you have any experience uh, with with alternative, you know? Uh, home office architecture? So I bought my desk at Ikea like a year or two before standing desk became normal. And so this desk now comes in standing desk form. I don't have a standing desk. I know people love their standing desks. Um, that's great. I have, I bought one of the um, under desk ellipticals so that I could attempt to exercise while I was working. And I, I've had it for a couple of years and I've never been, it, it requires too much energy. Like I, I can't focus and do the elliptical at the same time. So that was a waste for me. I'm sure many people have been successful. That has not worked. I have a teammate who just has a full size treadmill uh, in her office and she'll just go and put her laptop on it and we'll see her kind of, you know, walking back. She's walking and she's on the treadmill and it, it's cool. So I think do what works for you. But make sure you are, you know, paying attention to ergonomics. So my husband spent, my husband does not usually work from home. And he spent the first, I don't know, like 10 months of the pandemic sitting in like an office folding chair that you could buy for $30. And he started having all this tingling in his legs and he couldn't figure out what it was. And finally we were like, you need a real chair. So he went and then the tingling in his legs went away. <laughs> so you know, make sure you're, you're sitting in a real chair, you've got your keyboard at the right height. Um, I have like a $10 um, pull out keyboard tray for, that I got from Ikea that you can attach underneath a table so that you can get your keyboard at the right height, make sure your monitor's at the right height, you know, do what works for you. But no, I don't, I don't have a really cool setup. I have a pretty normal setup here. Cool, and, and you're making it work, so that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it looks like we've got we've got a few thank yous here, but I would, I've got no more questions popping up. So um, Are, can I plug can I plug my resources real quick? Please do. Okay, so if you look um, at the end of this deck, I've got a bunch of links to all the studies that I mentioned. Um, so if you want to do some more research, it's all on the back of the slide deck. Um, also, I've written a blog article, a blog post, an article that covers the exact same tips. So if you're more of a reading person, you want to go back and reference it, share it with a friend. That's there as well. Um, another talk I gave, a podcast I was on with other suggestions. 
So all that is in the slide deck and um, you can find that on my link. I don't know if I can share links in this because we don't have a, ch I also want to chat. I'm with whoever yeah. it was that suggested that. So I would like a chat. So we will we will be publishing your slide deck uh, if you would be good enough to share it with us on the sure. Edinburgh PTS website, and that's also where the recording of this presentation will be uploaded um, in very shortly, not today, but in the awesome. next few. Days. So cool. Thank you very much, Lauren. Um, You're that welcome. Was, that was really good, and we've had a lot of interaction from uh, from people who. Uh, are not allowed to chat, but they are allowed to ask questions. So, so that's good. Uh, just to remind it, uh, those of you that are still on that Claire Sudbury will be talking about keeping promises this time next week, or rather seven o'clock next week. Um, and until then, um, it's goodbye from well, it's goodbye from the BCS Edinburgh, and it's goodbye from Lauren. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>